So it's a new day. We're finally working on the Eclipse again. And this is actually, so I'm in Canada. You couldn't get the Eclipse in, in Canada. You could get the Talon, the Eagle Talon. You could not get the Mitsubishi Eclipse. So it's kind of cool to have one here. Not that they're rare anymore, but they used to be. So actually, you know what that said? They are getting harder to find. Anyway, we did trim the rear, rear wheel wells out while I'm talking about it. So these are an 18 by eight and a half positive 40 offset. And we just did trim about a quarter inch out in there just to buy a little bit of room. We're not worrying about that today. We're gonna worry about, actually I did get these trim pieces. There's this dude in Calgary that had like everything I needed for the green car. We'll talk about that in a second. But right now, so he does have those trim pieces. I did grab those, but we're gonna focus on, we modified the OE bracket just to get by. And I picked up these cool brackets by Planted, which is ironic because they are a Planted seat bracket. And they, you know what? They're actually very beautiful. They weren't cheap, but uh, they're pretty heavy duty. Don't want to mess around with safety. I'm hoping they lower the seat a solid inch or two because right now my head hits the liner by about an inch or two. That seat's just kind of laying in there. Don't worry about that. So we're going to get that on. Uh, we're going to see where it takes us and uh, go from there. But while we're talking right now, let's just talk about... So this is the green car. You guys have all seen this car. If you haven't seen it, this is a tribute car we're building uh, for the Fast and the Furious. And we're going to get rid of... This car was originally built in 2003. We've repainted it. But it was built in 2003. So... The interior matches the era, but does not match today's. You know, like look at, so those are the seats. I did pick up some early 2000s Sparkle seats that are in great condition from a local guy named Jay. Uh, but we're gonna get all this dash and everything swapped out so it looks good. We will leave the painted sub box back here. Why not, right? There's another Sparkle seat. Um, so anyway, this dude Chris in Calgary area has like everything I need for the car. It's actually overwhelming. There's so much stuff here that we need to deal with. So we'll get that dealt with. Won't worry about it right now. Right now, we're going to worry about the red car. This one's kind of a long-term project. I'm still waiting on the decals. And see, I could have fixed stuff like this, but I just, the interior is so, see, there's the headliner. So if you didn't see the videos, check out my main channel. There are videos of this being pulled out of the bush. Uh, it's super cool, kind of see, neat to see in the bush, you know. Um, won't worry about that right now. We're going to worry about this. This is the GSX model, which is actually super cool. So if you don't know, that makes this 2G Eclipse all-wheel drive. So let's get this thing going. We're gonna change out the seats and see where it takes us. So I guess first impression is they fit great. Oh, I put these in by the way, just so you guys know. Uh, they fit great. Um, the holes line up, you know, pretty pretty good. Might be a quarter inch or so off right there, but I mean, every car is different. Nothing we can't fix. These are the original rails we were going to use, but they just sit too high. So this you can see is sitting as low as possible, right? Like it's only about, oh man, I don't know half an inch off the ground back there. I don't think it's a finger. Half an inch off the ground back there. So we'll get these in here. Um, the one challenge I'm gonna have is I'm gonna bolt the seat to this, but I'm not sure once the seat's in there how to get to some of these bolts. It's gonna be tricky because you know the seat's all the way around here. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Oh, I don't do product reviews, but man, like for the price tag of these planted brackets you would think they fit better i've already reamed them out about a quarter inch per hole and i don't want to go a whole bunch to make them fragile but like this one under here is still probably a half inch off and you know what I, I i know what you're thinking every car is different so i thought that but then i went and put them in the green car and it was the same thing and i thought maybe it's an old car thing so i actually lined them up with the oe bracket and can confirm that they are over almost three quarters of an inch off so they're not cheap, so it's kind of a disappointment. I mean, the welds look good, the, the fabrication looks good, but man, three quarters of an inch is huge. I, it's kind of frustrating, but I'll get it in here. It's just a bit of a setback. So to give you guys an idea of how much I've had to remote these holes, and like, don't get me wrong, the welding looks good, all the laser or plasma, I don't know what they use, but it looks good. But this is the bolt. Can you see that? Like that's significant. I don't think I want to go any bigger. It's going to make it weak in here. Um, yeah, so I've had to do them all, as you can see, and uh, there's a die grinder. But uh, that's as big as I want to go. So if this doesn't work, I think I'm going to end up having to cut this off and turn it just a hair. But we'll see what happens here. And oh man, after way too much messing around, I've been here for like an hour and a half doing this. This should have been two minutes. Anyway, we got one eBay race seat installed. We're going to do that one. It's just sitting, like I say, on the stock bracket. Look at the height difference. Can you guys see that? That seat's probably three plus inches higher. But these do not move back and forth. So there's that. 
but that one does have the, uh, I'll show you, does have the motor still on it. Unless I showed you earlier in the video, I'm not sure, but it does have the motor and stuff on it. So we're gonna take this out, put the bracket in this one. Let's do a before and after here. Obviously, if the sunroof wasn't here, my head would be hitting. I cannot, going forward, oh, I should have done that. My head's hitting here, but looking forward, I can't see a lot because uh, my head's so high. The other problem is, here's looking forward, I have that new headliner, but like, let's say I move that, I wouldn't be able to see a traffic light. So if I was at the proper stop line, I'd have to stop further back. That's one issue. The next issue is the seat or the steering wheel is as high as it goes and I can't seem to, yeah, I'm way too high. So hopefully a seat bracket lowers it. Um, the seat is in the all the way down position right now. Um, I'm concerned about leg room because as you can see, this seat here to that one's probably a four inch difference right now. Um, but I'm more concerned about, I mean, anybody could adjust a leg room. It's the height that's an issue. So let's see what happens here. So same deal with this one. I had to ream out the holes quite a bit. Um, actually over an inch by the time you add up the half inch there and the half inch over there. You know, if these were cheap, I probably wouldn't be so upset, but these were like $400. They don't give these things away. I mean, it looks better than what we built before, but definitely a lot of money. Um, and just to show, because so, I know some people are going to be like, are you sure you have the driver on the driver's side? I mean, the seatbelt bracket gives it away, but so does the uh, the label they put on it. <sighs> anyway, we're going to get this installed. It's 32 degrees Celsius here today, which is, I don't know what that is. I'm going to say 85 Fahrenheit. Get it installed and get out of here because I'm sweating. But things are going about as well as expected, to be honest. So this is initial test fit one. I did, like I say, grind out the bracket, but this is the first time having the seat in here. I did use the OE buckle like the other side and did use the wire to connect it under the seat so I don't have to listen to a chime the whole time. But first test fit sitting here. Oh, it's like significantly more headroom, like four inches probably. Decent room here. I am a little close to the pedals, but uh, you know, overall, I think if I put a different seat belt or a different steering wheel in, it won't be too bad, you know. Something that's not uh, like 18 inches in diameter. And uh, I think it'll make a big difference. I think the steering wheel is, yeah, it's in its highest position now. So that's uh, that's about it. But it's not a bad driving position, that's for sure. So after way too much modifying and grinding for a $400 bracket, I got it in here. And, uh, oh yeah, like this is, look at, like it was like four inches there. So I can see good visually. Seat's in a de decent spot for the pedals. I'm 6'1". It doesn't feel terrible. The steering wheel's huge, so I think if I get a different wheel, I'm gonna go pick up a Sparko, I think. Get that in here, and uh, I think we're cooking with cooking with some uh, fire here. Things are, things are moving along. It's been a long project. Have you guys been following it? I pulled this thing out of a field uh, know, a month ago, a bit more than a month ago. And uh, man, it's been a lot. I still have some interior pieces, I'll show you here. So I still have to get a few things. I do need the trim here. And I do need the kick panel trims. Um, I do need to fix this headliner. I'm not going to replace it. I do need that trim. I do need that kick panel. Um, things are moving though. I'm going to get a stereo for it. I think we'll just do like a single 10 or 12 inch sub in here. And uh, things are moving along. But yeah, it's been a lot of work. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about how those look. I don't feel amazing, but I don't feel terrible. I think the next step is we're going to wire this for a sub and uh we'll get a stereo in it so the easy part's always getting the wire to the back the difficult part is always getting the wire through the firewall at least it's not a four gauge i'm running an eight gauge because i don't plan on running more than probably 500 watts on a sub and um we'll go from there but right now um i think that's all we need i don't actually know what that's for but uh yeah we'll uh we'll do that we'll get this going here and see what we can do. So let's see what we're looking at for the firewall here. And as suspected, everything is tight. I, I got excited and I was like, oh, it's wired for a sub, but somebody just used a really long red wire for a ground for some reason. Um, and then over here, we've got a blue wire that's a shitty ground of some sort. And what else did I see? It was here. Oh yeah, this, I, Matt, like some people, I don't know. If I built that, like the car wouldn't even, really? The car wouldn't even run. Is this real life right now? Okay, and it keeps getting worse. Okay, um, we're gonna see if we can find a hole in the firewall, get the wire through there, and then we'll work on wiring the sub in. So it is tight, however, 
to add to the silver lining or whatever. So what I did find was right there, see that blue speaker wire that goes to nothing for whatever reason? It actually goes back through the firewall down there. So I'm gonna tie the eight gauge amp wire to there and pull it through. Cause I don't imagine that blue wire is doing anything anymore. Or if it is, well, it can't be, it's not hooked to anything. So let's try that. All right, and look at that. It worked just perfect. No problem. I actually never had a wire come through that easy. I don't know what this was doing under the hood. It didn't go anywhere. I should follow it inside the car here and actually see where it goes. It's a pretty random place to have a speaker wire. But anyway, we'll pull this through, run it to the hatch and get some more wires run. Okay, so that's all the way in the back. Now we'll trim it down. You don't want too long of a wire. You're just gonna get more resistance. The next step is we're going to run the switched igni or switch, yeah, switched ignition power for the amplifier. So it'll get a signal from the deck that we haven't installed yet. We're gonna run it on the same side as the power and to the back. We don't wanna run it on the same side as the RCA cables because we could end up with interference. So we'll run RCA cables ground one side, power the other side. If you don't know, electricity always flows ground to power. So, and don't think it goes power to ground. That's a myth. You don't wanna think that. Ground to power. That's why you always unhook a ground first, right? And we'll all run it across here. Cool. Well, that went way too smooth. So we've got our RCA cables. That's what supplies the audio signal. Got our ground, our power, and our signal power. It's like a two volt wire. Next, I think we're gonna move on to the deck before we get any of the amplifier and anything set up in here. We're gonna clean this up yet. We're gonna shorten the wires, move them all to one side. We'll do that after. Let's get the deck installed first. Now, if you don't know, generally speaking, doing something like this, the deck is the most time consuming part. Uh, with that said, um, we'll see how it goes. That, that went way too, I've never had a car go that easy. So let's, uh, let's grab this Pioneer deck we got right here. This guy doubled in Pioneer. We'll put that in there and see how things work. I don't even know if this car has speakers in it. We're gonna find out. Well, I spoke too soon. So here's the best we got. So we're not sure where this, hey, wait a minute. Okay, now we know where that wire goes. Why it went under the hood, I don't know. Like this is, this is the stereo area. There's a speaker wire going under the hood. Okay, we've got random plug here. I don't know what that is. Somebody's already been in here doing, well, we don't know. Um, what was the other stuff I saw? There must've been a disc changer at some point in this car. That's what this looks like. I have not seen a disc changer. I don't actually know where this ends up. There's the antenna wire down there. There's, I don't know, that's another wire. Um, the antenna wire is down here, I promise. There it is, right there. So this is gonna take a few minutes for sure. That, and I think Amazon shorted me my bracket kit to install this, so we may not get there. Okay, so I did find our constant power and our switched power down there. I did cheat and use a wiring schematic. You can also use, I did double check with the multimeter. You can always double check with a multimeter. Um, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use some, I always like to use uninsulated butt connectors. I'll crimp them on there. And then I like to use uh, insulated heat shrink tubing with, it's got the glue in it and uh, holds everything in place really nice. So we're gonna start connecting this stuff. And this is the problem with buying a 25 year old car. So I reach in and I saw this sticking out and I pull on it and all this comes out. Like. The way to do this, the actual way to do this is you buy the female connector that goes on the male end of the car side. There's a lot of companies that make them, but it's literally an adapter. It goes on there, converts everything over to what you need here, and it, this takes five minutes. Now somebody's hacked all those plugs off of here, and you got to go through one by one and figure out what they are. I have a wiring schematic, so I can cheat a little bit, but like we have random plugs here, a relay. There's another relay back here. I just, I don't understand why people are doing this, but either way, we'll figure it out here. Well, if you're a car guy, you get it. It starts as a three minute job and turns into an hour job. So I quickly thought I'd throw these rain, uh, what are we calling these again? Oh shit. Anyway, I thought I'd throw this trim on real quick cause it was missing these. Then I messed with the seal. I went to close the door and of course the glass didn't fit up top and it needs to be, can you hear that? Oh. It needs to be adjusted. So then you gotta take the door panel apart. Nothing can ever go quick. 
work on it. But uh, yeah. All right, guys. So we went back to the drawing board with this. We had to get a different hub because the one we got, obviously, as mentioned, was the wrong hub. So I got my new hub today. We're going to get it on there. We're going to see what it looks like. We got the car all polished by a local guy named Chris. It looks, this is I break my neck here, looks fantastic. Looks like a new car. I'm excited about this. So we're going to get the new hub on there right now. We're going to get the wheel on there and then go home for a hot dog. Well, it's hard to tell, but that actually came out pretty good, I think. I do love the Sparco steering wheel. And it feels good too, you know, like, uh, so I did put the quick release hub on here and uh, the Ener it's an NRG. Um, you can, I think you can buy a dress up kit that fills that hole and I'm not sure. It doesn't really bother me too much from here. You don't see it. So everything feels good though. And uh, yeah, see what's next. I got to get a bunch of stuff done on that one still. And uh, need to get the deck still installed in here. I can't actually find a dash kit. So we're gonna have to use a universal one. I think and make it, but I mean, it's not the end of the world really, but cool. Let's see what it looks like outside the car here. There's the old one. And yeah, I think it uh, I think it really suits the car. I don't know what you guys think, but it looks good to me. Look at this thing. This, I mean, it's kind of dark in here right now. I didn't turn on any lights, but Chris got it polished. And damn, Daniel, looks good. Looks really good.